morning. Welcome to the PPP time slash Woodruff Family Wisdom. My name is Daryl Woodruff, and I'll be sharing with you today a little bit about a word God gave me, uh, even for the new year. Actually, they gave it to me back on last year, but this year, you know how they make New Year's resol resolutions. We're making a commitment to God to uh, to apply this principle into our life uh, this year and see the results on in 2022 and beyond. So what I'm going to endeavor to do is kind of elaborate on it and uh, share some things from it. It's a lot, a lot of information here, but I got a full workout, not a full workout, but buys, tries, and chest that I, I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to endeavor to do is kind of share some of the principles with you, uh, share some of this revelation with you in between there. Hopefully I have the breath because I'm trying to I'm try to do some supersets on some of these uh, exercises. So may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. So we're going to get started. And uh, we'll start with the uh, with the chest, chest and by super set. I'm gonna start with a line bench with this uh, bow flex. I got an old bow flex XTL and old dumbbells. I don't know if you can see it right here, but I'm gonna start it off with some uh, concentrated dumbbell cur curls. Bah! With a uh, bench. So uh, in between them, we'll get on to this word. The word that God gave me said, give me focus. Give me focus. So meditate that while I get this uh, weight set up and get ready to get this, uh, this super set in. Big shout out to my partner, <clears throat> Sebastian Kofa. I can remember times we would uh we was getting ready for some of this powerlifting contests and uh we get in that word and just uh get that iron in, man. We lifting that that raw iron up in there in that gym, man. And DBS, shout out to DBS. You know, giving us that opportunity. Been 27 years with him, but uh here we go. Let's get it in.
jump. Again, the title of this word is Give Me Focus. I was praying one day about uh, the results. Uh, I just felt like I should have been getting as a Christian and uh, what the covenant and what God's word say about us prospering and being blessed. And uh, I'm a realist. So I look back at the covenant of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and, you know, and looking at how blessed they were and how God seemed to prosper everything they put their hands to, whether it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel, just Old Testament characters, let alone what God did in the New Testament. And the Lord began to deal with me about giving him focus. And this is what he said. This is coming out of Romans 5, 20, 21. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. In verse 21, the King James Version said, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Key words here. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So I told God, I said, look, I don't see grace abounding like sin did. I'm just being honest, you know. And he said, I said, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So what position did you put sin in? What kind of focus did you give sin? When you did sin, did you wake up thinking about righteousness? When you lived in sin, did you get up and read your Bible? You know, how focused was you on the opposite side while you was planning your life of sin? Like, I had none of that going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I lived a non-compromised life when it came to righteousness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to do no righteousness. As a matter of fact, if you talk to me about God, you get your feelings hurt. So he said, where sin did abound, put grace in the same position. Give grace that same focus and see what I do for you. I said, oh man, I don't think I ever, you know, gave God's word, his grace, the things of God, that kind of position. Even from perspective of uh, what you did in the natural under the influence uh, of the Spirit of God, never committed with that type of focus. So God said, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Now, we're going to be going to another chapter that's elaborating on that point. But let me get another set in. Super set.
recipe. Let me give you this other uh, scripture. Galatians 6, verse 1 through 10. And this is the message Bible. I'm trying to be brief. But maybe we'll read a little bit and get back going. It says, live creatively, friends. Now, just with that statement alone, you know, if you're out here YouTube and trying to put content out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. In fact, if you would, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. Especially on YouTube, like and subscribe. Give us a comment. You know, let us know how you're liking our, the content. But you have to live creatively. Say, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him. Save your critical comments for yourself. You know, that's powerful because sometimes we're so quick to judge everybody else. And uh, God said, just save that for yourself. Because you know, uh, we was all sinners when God reached out and got us. You might be in, you might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens. And so complete Christ's law. You might say, Daryl, what they got to do with giving God focus? Let's get to what we focusing on. What's the assignment? Be creative. Don't look down on people. Reach out and help somebody. That's ministry, ain't it? Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens. And so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Huh? Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then the scripture says, sink yourself into that. I'm talking about giving God the same amount of focus. He give you your assignment, all right? Share with you who you are in the word. Then he says, sink yourself into that. In other words, give it focus. I'm going back in to get my last set. Lying flat chest. Uh, don't be a curse or bias. We'll keep it moving. God bless you. Meditate that word while I'm in between these sets. Sink your teeth into it. You, you. Two more now. Three more on the left. Let's sink into it. Thank you.
So they make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of us must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. That's another thing that's more so powerful. Don't take people for granted. Then again, <laughs> shout out to my boy, uh, Sebastian. I remember when the Lord was blessing him to become a trainer as well as, I mean, he had several things going on. He was powerlifting, bodybuilding, and he was training amongst a lot, a lot of other things. And people would try to leverage him for free. And I used to tease him and say, man, what's what they think you as complimentary Kofa? In other words, if people are mentoring you, pouring into you, how can you give back? How can you share with them from your experiences? And uh, sharing, the Bible says sharing all the good things that you have and experience. A lot of times we only think of this in the, in the church. If you receiving from the minister, the man of God, you ought to give back to their ministry. But all your mentors, you ought to give back to them to be a blessing. The scripture said, don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. Remember, we're talking about giving God focus and sinking your teeth into it. We're going to continue on. Stay tuned. We're about to get set up for the next chest exercise. Won't be super setting with this one because of uh, the inconvenience of the of, of my setup here. So I'm going to the next chest exercise. This flies. take that back. <laughs> I do superset the flies for the chest, but I superset them with what I call skull crushers, which is really lying tricep extensions. And because I'm doing them on both legs, I won't bring it to the skull, but wherever, the, wherever we come up at, we'll, we'll crush it from there for the, for the, for the uh, tricep. Go back in. We talked about sinking your teeth into that of who you are and the work God has given you to do. 
and know that you will reap what you sow. But if you sow for, to selfishness, you're just going to reap a crop of weeds. Okay, let's go into it. Plant selfishness, ignoring the needs of others and ignoring God. Let's go back to those mentors again because guess what? Your mentors have needs as well. If they sow into you of their spiritual, you ought to sow of them your natural. But a lot of times the mentors, they're infusing our souls with the motivation and inf information that you need to, to move forward. Let's not take each other for granted in these last hours. Let's go forward again. He said, all he'll have to show for his life is weeds. Let's go forward. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the work. Now, I, let me back up. Letting God's spirit do the growth work in him. Harvest a crop of real life. Eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to be fat, fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Isn't that powerful? Let's give God some focus. Let's go to work. Remember, where sin did abound, the grace of God did much more abound. The grace of God to change you into who you are and the work that you got to do. Let's sink ourselves into it. So we're sinking ourselves into it. Let's go. That's set two. Let's keep it moving. Remember, what sin did about, let's do. Grace did much more about. Let's put grace in the same situation. Let's keep it moving. Look like this workout is going on, so let's keep moving. Proverbs 22 and verse 8 says in the TPT version, sin is a seed that brings a harvest. You reap a, a heap of trouble with every seed you plant. For your investment in sin in sins pays a full return, the full punishment you deserve. So, so far, in short, God is saying, so good with the same focus you gave sin. No compromise. What you will share from your life is what I'm manifesting that I have you focused on according to my will. Let me say that again. What you will share from your life is what I'm manifesting that I have you focused on according to my will. Third John. 1 and verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Now we're going to make a shift and say, God, what is it that you're manifesting 
that's according to your will that you want me focused on. He said, that's what you're going to share out of your life. So today, that's why we're sharing out of our life uh, today. Right now, it's, it's 6 in the morning or Tuesday morning. Probably won't share this to Wednesday by, by the time you edit it and everything. But uh, we're getting it in. But we're going to elaborate a little bit on 3 John verse one, I mean, chapter 1, verse 2. And we'll talk about... Uh, giving God that focus on who you are and the work that you've been given to do. Again, we're going to talk about the will of God and how he wants us focused on that. And we're going to elaborate a little bit on, again, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Let's get this third set in. So he said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. This, God said above all things. This, speak, this speaks to priority, excuse me. This speaks to priority. Not that other things don't matter, but the soul relationship with God's kingdom is first. The soul being our mind, will, and emotions. Then he said, be in health. That is power. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prosper. The soul being the thermostat to everything else. Because listen, if emotionally you're not locked in, and then grab the word and save your soul, you're not going to have longevity where your health is concerned or your finances. So he said, above all things. Then he said, be in health. That's like, that's a commandment. To me, this speaks of no compromise, number one. And then number two, a decree, be in health, right? And number three, commitment. Because you can understand the fact that God don't want you to compromise. And number two, you can decree it. But number three, you have to commit to what it takes to be healthy. Now, granted, me being in this gym is bodily exercise. The Bible said bodily exercise profit a little. The key to your health is first of all spiritual, second of all it's emotional, and it's in that soul realm because if your cortisol levels is high due to stress and everything else, and you don't know how to have peace in your soul, that's going to be an issue. It's going to down you back in your health. A lot of times, some of the exercises and diet plans that we do, it's just going to add more cortisol levels of stress to your body. And until you get that down pat, your metabolism and everything else is not going to do like it's supposed to. He said, I want you to prosper. Be in heaven even as your soul prosper. Let's go a little deeper. Third on that list is that you prosper. Anybody that tell you that's went through anything in their health realize that your health is your wealth. It's very, very much foundational because if you don't feel like going to do the plans that God has for you, you know, <laughs> you can't run and not be weary. You can't walk and not faint, right? So third on that list is that you prosper. This ties back to your soul and health because 
your emotional well-being and physical health is impacted when you are oppressed due to lack. Now, when we come back, during the next set, we're going to go to a scripture in Lamentations. Lamentations 3, verse 17 and 18. And we got several more, but we want to put it all in perspective. Because again, we talk about giving God the same amount of focus. All right? So here we go. Giving the things of God focus. Here. What grace did abound, what sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So let's give God a chance in New Year, this New Year. So we know that your soul won't have to prosper too. Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And thou has removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. <laughs> And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Listen, the only reason you haven't been consumed, half stepping before God in this day and time, is because his mercies is new every morning. The writer of Lamentations let us know that you don't have no peace because you forgot about your prosperity. God wishes above all things that you prosper, be in help even as your soul prosper. These three work simultaneously. You can't have peace in your soul if your finances are impacted and it's stressing you out. You got to have your money. Remember, he said, I wish above all things. I wish above all things. I apologize for this light. But we are early in the morning. It's still night outside. And so that's causing us an issue. But we'll get better. Get some better light next time. Right now, the content is we're going to get this word in and get this work out. Then it reads on, and I might be going on to uh, verse, really going to verse 27, but I got all these scriptures put together, so you have to catch up with me down through there again. This is the King James Version I'm going on. It said, the, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore would I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. 
It's a good thing that if you learn this when you're young, I'm 57 years old, going to be 58 next month. And we're talking now about giving God total focus. You young folks, if you learn this early in the game, life will be a whole lot easier for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Let's go to work. Center for our next exercise. It's gonna be um, almost like a for the lower chest. I'm gonna pull them down, but I'm gonna do it standing up, like a decline bench. But I'm gonna do it standing up. Then we're gonna get that last exercise on the tricep. Tricep pull down with my rope. Even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, being in the gym, sharing that word. Awesome. Hope some of the fellas can tune in. Let's see this down. Grace did much more about it. Let's get it in. Sit down. You won't be able to see me right here. Let's see. There you can. We just came out of lamentation. Don't forget about your prosperity. Renew your soul with this mentally. Renew your soul with this mentality first and God's will established perfectly will infiltrate and dominate your entire life. In Romans 12, 1 through verse 2, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. We have to renew our mind to be focused on the things of God, doing what we do through the will of God and give God the same amount of focus that we gave sin and watch God prosper us. You'll prosper being happy even as your soul will prosper. The good and perfect and acceptable will come through not being conformed to this world, but getting your mind transformed and renewed through the word of God and presenting your body a living sacrifice. Paul said, I keep under my body, not bring it under subjection, lest I thought I preach to everybody else. I myself would be a castaway. But we refuse to be a castaway. Let's go. Set number two. You can see this is hard to get it down, man, when you're standing up. It's hard to use your weight when it's, it was this far up, but once you get into it, it's pretty good. Here we go. Yep. Lightweight, pump weight, fast, baby. Boom, boom. We 
round it up, fellas. We round it up. Let's hit Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do, of his good pleasure. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. We talked about knowing who you are and the work God got planned for you, that is his purpose. And through that purpose, sinking into it, he wishes above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prosper. We're going to prove out the good and perfect and acceptable will of God because our minds is now renewed to what the word of God says about our life. We'll get this third set in. Then we're going to blast these triceps. Coach, this is working tries too, as well as that chest. Coach, we did the uh, dumb, the, the, the flies, and superset them with the with the uh, tricep extension. But we're gonna end off with the rope for the triceps. Let's get in. That last set for tricep. Let's see what we got left. Not to wear on your patience. I kind of skipped some of the things. I wanted to get some of his word in. We just came out of Roma. Philippians 2.13, for it's God to work with them to both the willing to do of his good pleasure. But let me elaborate on that a little bit too, because I know this is going a little deep, but God's pleasure is your prosperity. I think it was Psalms 35 where he said, let them shout for joy, let favor my righteous cause, and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That's significant that God will work in you both the willing to do for his good pleasure, because that's your prosperity. From the inside out. Listen, if you win from the inside, you win on the outside. Everything that you do. But what's more significant in the kingdom of God is different. It's not some positive saying or cliche. In the kingdom of God, we have the power to do it. Because we can't do all things through Christ that strengthens us from the inside, right? But not only that, angels are assigned to you to win. Psalms 103, I believe it's verse 20 down through there. He said, the kingdom of God ruleth over all. But he said, his angels excel in strength doing God's pleasure. So your pleasure, God's, God's pros your prosperity is God's pleasure. And so angels have to assist in that pleasure. So now you got even angels on your side against any demonic attack. In fact, I would venture to say besides your flesh, being uh, opposed to the will of God in your life. It's demonic activity. And you need to bind that devil and loose the angels of God who sent forth to be ministered for them who are heirs of salvation. So, we was in Romans chapter 8. And we're going to end it right there. We're going to get these sets in of this tricep. Let's get it in. Remember, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Let's give God some focus. I'm going to blast these tricep. Tricep extension. Pull downs.
it's Wednesday, baby. Let's get it in. Happy New Year to everyone out there. PPP time. So that's wisdom for the family. Just Daryl Woodruff. We get it in for the new year. I think it's about the 4th of January. Damn, but we're going to post it. But we're on this win. Let's go, let's go. Chest pump, chest pump, let's go. Just a little quickie. Last set, let's sink in. Let's sink in for the new year. Put your goals down in the comments below. And let's see what you're sinking your teeth into this year. Yeah. Big buys. Stop it. Dig down. That's it. It's PPP time. It's the last one for the family. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>